About a month ago, I made a video called Why I View Superman as a god. A lot of social media I use, it seems like a lot of people are really talking about this and how some people really do view him as a god and some people just don't. Now, not only am I seeing a lot of discourse on this, but I'm also seeing a lot of people get violent with one another. This is not a direct follow-up video to my Superman being a god video. This is also not a follow-up video to the video I made a couple weeks ago about how terrible the DC fan base is today. This is just some extra information I found about Superman being more pointed towards a god and also how Superman is just viewed in general today. Now, if you're a big follower of DC and you've been been a fan of DC for a long time, you probably know that being a Superman fan has been very difficult. And also too, it seems like Superman tends to be a big topic of discussion today. The whole drama with Henry Cavill being Superman, everything going on with James Gunn apparently making his new Superman movie, the Superman and Lois show on CW, which a lot of people seem to like. Superman is heavily talked about today, a lot more than he was talked about even maybe five years ago. We certainly live in a world where Batman is the front runner for DC. He is the character everybody cares about and wants more more of. Hell, we're potentially going to be getting two different Batman movies releasing in theaters at the same time. 70 to 80 years ago, the answer would have been Superman. Superman is the hero everyone wanted and everyone cared about, whereas Batman was a little more on the sidelines between the two of them. But today, it's opposite. The world has changed. The way we look at film, the way we look at characters and comic books are different as well. So I have this book called Super Gods, which is written by Grant Morrison, a very prolific comic book writer, especially with Batman stories. Within this book, Grant Morrison talks a lot about what these very famous and legendary superheroes mean to our societies, even within the past 70 to 80 years. And he especially talks a lot about Batman and Superman. Those are the characters he has covered a lot in his history. So is Superman a god? Yes or no? Some people like me say yes. Some people say no. We shake hands and we agree to disagree. But I still tend to see that a lot of people on social media have little dick syndrome and can't seem to handle the fact that others have difference of opinions from them or just the simple fact that other people have factual information and they don't like to be wrong. So on pages 15 and 16, Grant Morrison specifically talks about the nature of Superman, his creation, and how Superman is seen today. And for anybody out there who, for whatever reason, despises the idea that people view Superman as a god, and for anybody out there who is hating or shaming on this idea, or just can't seem to understand that Superman being a god is a thing, well, let me read this for you. In Superman, some of the loftiest aspirations of our species came hurtling down from imagination's bright heaven to collide with the lowest form of entertainment, and from their union, something powerful and resonant was born, albeit in its underwear. He was brave, he was clever, he never gave up, and he never let anyone down. He stood up for the weak and knew how to see off bullies of all kinds. He couldn't be hurt or killed by the bad guys, hard as they might try. He didn't get sick. He was fiercely loyal to his friends and to his adopted world. He was Apollo, the sun god, the unbeatable supreme self, the personal greatness of which we all know we're capable. This is one of many gods that Grant Morrison relates Superman to being. The god type of references get even bigger from a god like Apollo. He was the righteous inner authority and lover of justice that blazed behind the starched shirt front of hierarchical conformity. In other words then, Superman was the rebirth of our oldest idea. He was a god. Right there. Right out of the mouth of one of the most influential comic book writers, Grant Morrison, he was a god. Once again, you don't have to agree with this 
but this is hard to argue with. And now the whole God argument of Superman, I don't really think is such a stupid argument. His throne topped the peaks of an emergent dime store Olympus, and like Zeus, he would disguise himself as a mortal to walk among the common people and stay in touch with their dramas and their passions. Go back to my video where I talk about why I view Superman as a god. I specifically say in that video that Superman shared tropes with Zeus where he would morph into a regular type of human on Earth and he would basically spy on us. He would watch over us. My thought process on that didn't even come from this book. I wasn't inspired from this book to say that. Yet we find someone with a very similar way of thinking of how Superman has shared very classical godlike tropes. The parallels continued. His S is a stylized lightning stroke, the weapon of Zeus, motivating bolt of stern authority and just retribution. And as the opening caption of the Superman origin story from 1939 suggested, as a distant planet was destroyed by old age, a scientist placed his infant son within a hastily devised spaceship, launching it toward Earth. He was like the baby Moses, or the Hindu Karna, set adrift in a basket on the river of destiny. And then there was the western deity he best resembled. Superman was Christ an unkillable champion sent down by his heavenly father Jor-El to redeem us by example and teach us how to solve our problems without killing one another. In his shameless technicolor dream suit, he was a pop star too, a machine age messiah, a sci-fi redeemer. He seemed designed to press as many buttons as you had. I'm not a religious person, although when you see such a prolific character like Superman get reference to being similar to a Jesus Christ, or a Zeus, or an Apollo, it's kind of hard to argue the fact that maybe Superman was not made with the intention of being a god. And even if he was made like that, it is very clear as day that his character got more interesting once he started to be viewed that way. Superman has been viewed as a god in DC Comics for years, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and now in the 2020s. Some of the most popular Superman images almost show Superman as being an angelic god type of creature. And now Grant Morrison is talking about Superman in the god conformity. And I'm not going to read this whole paragraph, but just this section here where it says, but if the story of Jesus has a central theme, it's surely this. When a god elects to come to earth, he has to make a few sacrifices. And we've all seen in various forms of media, whether it be comic books or animation or movies, because we most recently saw it in movies, Superman does lay down his life a lot to be sacrificed. He always seems to lay down his life for humanity, to help us, to save us. He's done it with Doomsday many, many times. Even too in Batman vs Superman where there's that montage scene and we see Superman pulling the boat saving the astronauts on the rocket launch, saving people from a tsunami. There's a specific man on the news channel who calls him a messianic figure. And I think that the power level of Superman, what he stands for, how he looks, the way he's been drawn, the stories he's been given over time, he definitely has that attribute. Now, in all fairness, what does being a god mean? Is it someone who literally has the power of creation? Or is being a god someone who just has more power than us, who can do things that we can't even fathom? I don't necessarily think there's a right answer to that, and how you choose to view it is all up to you. But when I look at Superman, there is far too much evidence. I have to relate Kal-El as a type of god. And look, if you don't agree with it, 
or if you just don't see it, that's all up to you. Bygones can be bygones, we're good. But for anybody out there who keeps crying and yelling, kicking and screaming, and is literally telling you you're stupid for thinking this, because I've seen it, just read this book, come back to this video, watch my other video. There is definitive proof everywhere why Superman is a godlike character. Now, the second part of this video that I want to get into, even though I view Superman as a god, even though I like viewing him as a god, and a lot of you do, does that affect his character today? Because we all know he's not as popular as Batman has been in quite some time. Batman has easily received double the appearances Superman has in media today within maybe the past 20 years. Lately, there's been a lot of discussion. If James Gunn's Superman movie happens, because we all know how much of a mess Warner Brothers company is right now, if James Gunn's Superman movie is good, how much money will a Superman movie make? I think there is a very, 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 very high chance that a new Superman movie will not crack a billion. I actually cannot see that happening at all. There's a lot of factors to take in here, knowing that some people don't want Gunn making the Superman movie, knowing that some people just want a Man of Steel 2 with Henry Cavill, knowing that some people don't enjoy Superman movies in general. Superman is kind of a hard character to get the mass audiences interested in today. And is that because of how Superman just simply is as a character? Is he too good? Is he too powerful? I hear a lot of times a lot of people arguing Superman's boring because he's too powerful, because he can't be beat. I don't agree with that, and I'm sure a lot of you DC fans who watch me don't agree with that as well, but from the eyes of a general audience, from the eyes of people who just want to enjoy superhero movies, that might be how they feel about him, and they don't want to take the time to understand more of him, and we just have to understand that not everybody is like that. So this has been something I've been thinking about a lot lately, and conveniently enough, I found Grant Morrison talking about it in this book in pages 25 and 26. This is what Grant has to say when comparing Batman and Superman to one another, and why Batman may be more popular today. Batman then may have been a construct but he was an immaculate construct, precision engineered to endure. Batman was born of the deliberate reversal of everything in the Superman dynamic. Superman was an alien with incredible powers. Batman was a human being with no superhuman abilities. Superman's costume was brightly colored. Batman's was grayscale and somber with mocking flashes of yellow. In his secret Clark Kent identity, Superman was a hard-working farmer's son who grew up in a small town Kansas, while Batman's Bruce Wayne enjoyed life as a wealthy playboy, an East Coast sophisticate descended from old money. Clark had a boss, Bruce had a butler. Clark pined after Lois, Bruce burned through a string of debutantes and leading ladies. Superman worked alone, Batman had a boy partner Robin who wore green briefs, a black mask, and a yellow cape. Superman was rational, a Polonian, Batman was Dionysian. Superman's mission was the measured allotment of justice, Batman's an emotive two-fisted ask questions later vendetta. Superman began as a socialist but Batman was the ultimate capitalist hero, which may help explain his career current popularity, and Superman's relative loss of significance. Batman was a wish-fulfillment figure as both filthy rich Bruce Wayne and his swashbuckling alter ego. He was a millionaire who vented his childlike fury on the criminal classes of the lower orders. He was the defender of privilege and hierarchy. In a world where wealth and celebrity are the measures of accomplishment, it's no surprise that the most popular superhero characters today are Batman and Iron Man both handsome tycoons. The socialist and the social light, the only thing Superman and Batman could agree on was that killing is wrong. And even in some iterations of comic books or other media, they don't fear from killing. Now after reading that paragraph in the book, it really hit me. It clued in. And I think what he said is true, is not just because of the whole 
brooding and dark and gritty type of nature that Batman brings to the table, because that is absolutely cool. Not only is it about a man who dresses up in some of the coolest armor we've ever seen, fights crime at night, absolutely shows no mercy, is capable of doing things that no top tier human can even do, can now also stand up amongst gods himself, he himself might even be seen as a human type of godlike figure, but the fact that he's filthy rich, the fact that the measurement of people's lives today is how well known you are, how popular you are, how much money you have, Everybody wants that. Everybody searches for the fame, the popularity, the money. Everyone wants to be a millionaire billionaire, especially in today's society. That seems to potentially be the number one, two, third thing on their mind on what they want for their life, what they want right now. And Batman can speak to you in that fashion because he is filthy rich because being rich is cool. Has being poor ever been viewed as cool? No, because people don't care when you're poor. It's super sad and unfortunate, but not many people care about people like that. Is it cool to be in the middle class, having a fair enough income and making a living? Oh, good for you, but no, nobody cares. People like the rich characters. And whereas Batman has this type of attitude that, sure, I'm rich, but at the end of the day, I don't care. I could lose all my riches and still be Batman. He has so much money, so he doesn't need to care about it. And then on the other side of things, you have Superman. Sure, Superman as a whole is cool. Now you add into the fact that his alter ego, Clark Kent, is nowhere near as cool as Bruce Wayne. An alter ego in Clark Kent, who might I add, over time in history has been shown to struggle with money and to be able to stand on his own two feet in an apartment building in Metropolis. Grant covers it great in his book. When Batman puts on his other mask during the day to become Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is seen, he's felt, he's heard. Everyone wants to be him, everyone wants to see him, everyone wants to hang out with him. With Clark Kent, he's a nobody, nobody cares. Now that's certainly the intention of Clark Kent, he doesn't want to bring too much attention to himself, but when it comes to people watching these characters, Clark Kent is the boring one. It's the same thing when you look at the MCU. Nobody talks about Steve Rogers. People like Captain America for who he is. He's not the best character, but people enjoy him. No one cares about Steve. But when you look at Iron Man, everybody loves Iron Man. Everyone loves the boy in armor. Everybody loves Tony Stark. He's so rich. He's got cool cars. He's got a lot of money. He's got a beautiful house. That's the issue with the Superman Batman complex. And I think that is why we can live in a world where Batman constantly seems to get new movies every single week and why it seems to be a struggle to get one Superman movie every 10 to 15 years. So what does that mean for Superman moving forward? How does this reflect on his new movie coming out in 2025? Can this Superman get over that hump? Is this Superman capable of bypassing everything that people don't care about the character and finding a way to make people care about the character? I absolutely love Superman. My love for the character has grown so much over the years. And I want to see a lot of success for this type of character. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle him, knowing that everything I said here, everything I've mentioned from the book, may not be the definitive reason why Superman is not as popular, but they certainly are very good points. They are certainly very big reasons on why. And now we're going to have to wait and see if the Superman movie is capable of capitalizing on things that people don't seem to care about 
within his character. But that's it for this video, everyone. Once again, the information comes from Super Gods by Grant Morrison. I highly suggest you guys pick up this book if you're really interested in the history of these superheroes and some more of the insights about them. I'm definitely going to make more videos about this book in the future because I can already tell there's some great points he makes in this that I'm gonna want to talk about. But you let me know in the comments below what you think about both sides of this video. Superman being a god and Superman's lack of popularity when you compare him to Batman. But that is it for this one everyone. As per usual, I will talk to you all very soon.